My name is David Wilmore. My wife, Sharman, and I have been partners in ministry with White Oak Christian Church for 42 years, having raised all three of our children at White Oak. If you are following along with the White Oak Christian Church Bible reading plan, we will be focusing our time and attention on Luke 22:54 through 23, 25. I encourage you to read through these stories on your own and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Today I'm going to focus on Luke 22, 56 through 62. I am reading from the New Revised Standard Version. A servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also is with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. What is this passage saying? This passage relates to us the events on the evening of Jesus' betrayal. We remember the conversation earlier in the evening during the celebration of the Passover meal in the upper room when Peter very boldly stated that he was ready to die with Jesus. But exactly as Jesus had predicted, Peter denied he even knew Jesus, not once, not twice, but three times. Each time someone confronted Peter about his relationship to Jesus, every response became stronger in its boldness of denial. What does this tell me about God? This section of scripture reinforces to me the fact that God is omniscient. He knows all. He knew what Peter would do. He very clearly had prophesied exactly what would go down, and it did. Jesus, being God, was well aware of what Peter would face and how he would react to it. What does this passage tell me about people? People are well-intended, but we are weak. If you are like me, you are quite well-intentioned in that you want to serve God, you want to read scripture, you want to attend worship, you want to live a life that honors and glorifies God. However, also, if you are like me, you get frustrated with yourself because you fall through on commitments, you fall behind on your scripture reading, you miss more worship opportunities than you want, and you look around at an embarrassing time praying that no one who knows you claim to be a Christian saw your unchristlike response. Can you even begin to imagine how Peter must have felt when after hearing the cock crow, he looked over and saw Jesus staring straight at him? The timing was perfect. Peter denies for the third time. The cock crows. Jesus is ushered through the crowd. Peter's and Jesus' eyes meet at exactly the same time. I can't help but wonder if Peter took the look on Jesus' face as one of forgiveness, compassion, understanding, or maybe Peter took it as a see I told you so moment. Regardless, Peter's response was one of great remorse. He had to have been quite frustrated with himself as well as embarrassed of his weakness and failure to stand firm for Jesus. Try as hard as we might, we don't do what we want to do, and we do what we don't want to. Sound familiar? How should I live my life based on what I have read? I actually received great encouragement from this scripture. Just like King David, who was a great sinner, but described by God as a man after God's own heart. Just like the Apostle Paul, who struggled with doing what he didn't want to do and not doing what he wanted to do, yet he planted churches throughout the Gentile world and wrote much of what we have in the New Testament. Peter flat out denied he even knew Jesus, yet Jesus was able to use Peter. He spoke on the day of Pentecost with such conviction that 3,000 were added to the church on that one day alone. Peter was the apostle who held together all the other apostles after Jesus was crucified and led the church throughout the Jewish world. 
If God can find ways to use David, Paul, and Peter in spite of their weaknesses and failings, then I take great comfort that with his grace, forgiveness, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, God can find ways to use you and I as well. Have you ever felt that just maybe you have let God down? You can trust in his grace, forgiveness, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon you. You may be surprised just how Jesus can use us to serve him. So, how can Jesus use you to serve him?